Carter Hutton, great to see you. I hear you're up in uh, northern Ontario these days. How are things? It's good. It's good. A little, little colder than Buffalo, but it's good. Lots of sun, and uh, we've been enjoying it. Uh, getting out as much as we can, but obviously trying to keep our social distance here. They've got everything on lockdown. We've only had uh, one case up here, so they're trying to make sure that it doesn't hit. But it's been good. Yeah, when I see you talk hockey, I mean, I can't not think of your dad. So, like, how is this <laughs> affecting him not uh, being at the rink and watching games? I know, yeah, it's probably worse for him, I think, than anybody. He's uh, he's a huge hockey fan, and uh, he loves watching us play and uh, compete. So it's been good. But uh, I think just in general, right, it's such a weird time, you know what I mean, just for hockey aside, just for the world. So I think just trying to manage this the best we can. You know, we're such a minute thing when it comes to everybody's health. So hopefully this is uh, – we're heading in the right direction here, that's for sure. Well, I'm not surprised to, you know, hear that perspective from you. I mean, it's uh, something that we always appreciate in in having any conversation with you. And and yet, at the same time, these are your careers and these are, you know, times that you want to see it through and 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 continue to do what you do. How do you how do you balance that? I mean, uh, because obviously, you, you know, you still have to stay in some sort of a routine. Yeah, it's tough. You go from, you know, to such a strict routine and everything's laid out and you're, you know, I think just that physical energy that you, you put out on the rink in the gym and, and what you do, then all of a sudden it comes to a stop and you're confined to your house and like, you know, just some outdoor space. So it's not the same routine, but you have to adjust, right? And uh, I think for the guys with families, it's a little different, right? You have something to hold on to and, you know, you, you kind of put your energy in that direction where some of the single guys and younger guys you know, maybe there's a lot more downtime. So you have to find ways to manage that healthy. And, uh, but it's one of those things. It's like anything. I think this will get, get you ready for, for life after hockey. And for, for most of us, when the season ends, you have kind of no structure, you can kind of do whatever you want, but mm -hmm. it's the ones that choose to do the right things to take care of themselves and be ready. Cause truthfully, the way this is going, you never really know. It could be, you know, hopefully there's something that happens that gets us back on the right quicker, but at the same time, you have to be ready at all time. Uh, how busy are you daily with the kids? Pretty busy, you know what I mean? We, uh, we're we going nonstop. It's a lot of fun, though, you know what I mean? I think you, you jump from hockey to uh, to this. It's obviously, you take a little more appreciation for everyone, you know, for the wife staying home with the kids and you know, what she deals with. But uh, it's been a lot of fun, you know what I mean? I think to be a dad again and, and be home and, and have a lot more consistency in that, not having to come and go so much. How did you become um, a guy that, immediately seemingly when you came here to Buffalo and yeah, there's, you know, been coaching change and stuff, but you always kind of fit into that leadership profile. Like where did that evolve at? And at what stage of your career did, did that kind of become something that you could project whoever you were playing for? Um, I, I think just my personality and sense, I've always been, I've always been able to get along with mostly everybody. Um, or find a way to, you know, even if there was differences um, and to be able to put the team before myself, I think was a big thing, you know, just to see the goal of, uh, you know, the better we do, the better it is for everybody, right, as a whole. Uh, goaltending is such a weird position in that sense where you always have, there's kind of that internal competition that is created through, you know, there's only two goalies, one guy wants to play, right, uh, one guy's going to play, both want to play, Um but not trying to undermine anyone's success. I just feel like there's so we put so much energy into playing into what we do. There's no need to like be negative, especially when you're surrounded by people that always want you to succeed. I found mm -hmm. that early on in my career, you're surrounded by friends and family that want you to do well. They might not mean it, but they're always rooting for you over somebody else. Um, you know, like say if the other goalie doesn't play well, they're like, well, you should be playing. And, and it doesn't work in that sense. You can't you can't go down that road of negative structure and, and just a negative lifestyle. So I just try to be more upbeat and, and just try to take care of what I can and, and support the team. And I, I think as I've got a little older in the NHL and more confident being around the room um, with any team, it's just a respect thing, right? You just try to communicate and whether you're young or old, it doesn't matter. I think just everyone needs to be held at the same level where the old culture in hockey was like, if you're a young guy, you can't talk, you can't do anything. You're the rookie. You're, and I, I think that's something that, we've got away from, which is great. I think we want to have an even, you know, kind of flatten the hierarchy so that everyone has the confidence to talk and to communicate and to be, uh, you know, part of the team. And I think that's something we've done a really good job with. And with Jack and our leadership group, I think those guys create that atmosphere for sure. And Ralph, you know, Ralph is the head of that for sure. But then the other side of it is 
when anybody talks about, oh, yeah, we're in a group chat and whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> and I ask who the ringleader of that is. And often from a comedic side, it's you. So <laughs> when, yeah. when you're involved in group chats, let's say, um, how do you, if you initiate that, or do you like, to, if, is it, are you an initiator of the group chat or do you get in the middle of it once it's started and then direct it where you want it to go? Like, does it become personal in the humor or does it become group oriented? Like, how's that all work? Uh, I, I think it's always a group too. You know, I, I try to obviously, that's just, I like joking around. I like having fun. I enjoy it. I think life's too short not to have a smile on your face. Uh, but in the same sense, a lot of guys on our team are, you know, they just need a poke or a prod and they can get rolling too. So I think sometimes just putting stuff out there and having fun with it, uh, I think brings a team together too. And there's some guys that are quieter too. And, you know, I think you try to drag them into it a little bit sometimes. I think maybe I do that. Um, you know, if a quieter guy in the room or whether it's a group chat or whatever we're doing for on the bus or whatever we're doing, try to just make sure that everybody's in the mix and, uh, you know, because I think that's what brings a team together, right, is is making sure everyone's comfortable to have fun and, uh, you know, enjoy what we go do. And then there's obviously times where it's business and we have to do what we have to do. And, and that's where I think that the professionalism of everybody that plays in the NHL takes over. Uh, who, who would you say you've conversed with the most among your teammates um, during this? The, yeah, yeah, during this time. Uh, I don't know if there's just one guy in general, like me and me and Colin Miller were talking a bunch last night, um, just about different things. Uh, I've, I've talked with Jack a little bit, uh, Jake, and even, even we've had some meetings with the NHLPA too. So I, I was texting Skinner a little bit. He had a, we had a conference call and he had some really good takes. Um, I think what's good too, is during this time, it's such a weird experience. Um, from that standpoint, the business side of it with our union versus in the NHL, trying to manage how we're going to come out of this, um, and it's good for younger guys to kind of see that too. You know, this is our career. It is our livelihood. Um, so to try to learn what is best and try to under, understand the structure of it. And I thought Skinner Skinner was great to talk to because he went through the lockout at a really young age. Um, you know, different scenarios. And now he's an older guy. He has a different perspective on it. So trying to, because when you're younger, you can just be like, oh, whatever. It'll come back when it comes back. You know, less it's less dramatic impact. Where like for me personally, as it gets older, you're like, you know, your time is a lot more valuable. So I think from that perspective, it's been good just, you know, hearing different guys takes on it and stuff like that. And just checking in with guys, seeing how guys are doing. Yeah, really interesting for sure. Uh, best to you and your family. Thanks so much for the time. No problem. Thanks for having me on, Doctor.